So here we go, balancing equations. And the first equation I'd like to look at is making magnesium oxide. Now, if you remember, we did this as a practical. Um, so making magnesium oxide. Magnesium and oxygen makes magnesium oxide. Really, really simple. But what we need to do is make sure we have the same number of atoms on each side. The law of conservation of mass states that... In a chemical reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. Now, luckily for us, we know what chemicals are there. We're not being asked to figure it out all by ourselves, uh, which might come a bit later. Because when you have to figure it out all by yourself, it's a bit like when you go into a classroom and there's a new seating plan and you look at it and you go... I can't sit there, I don't get on with that person. That's exactly what atoms do. So we can't change what the atoms are or how many we make because otherwise it ruins the seating plan because they're not going to sit next to that person they don't like. Okay, so we now need to figure out how to make the same number, the same amount of atoms on each side because we can't create or destroy mass. We've just got to work with what we've got. So what I suggest we do is we either do circles underneath, and you can draw circles, or what I like to do is use Lego studs, like these, okay? So these are just from a Lego set, really nice and easy, and no rule against having them in your pencil case in an exam. There might be if everyone in the world starts doing it because they've watched this video, but never mind. Um, do check actually if you're allowed them in your mental maths paper, your non-calculator paper, because if you are, then that might help you there as well. If you're not, be really careful and only take these to chemistry because I don't want to get you into trouble for other subjects. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make magnesium purple and we've got one magnesium. Oxygen is going to be gold and we've got O2 is two atoms of oxygen. So what we need are two separate studs, which is an easy one-handed, hang on a second. Okay, so now I've got two oxygens for O2, and that makes magnesium oxide. So I add in one magnesium and one oxygen. Now the rule is everything on each side of the arrow has to balance, has to be the same. So I've got one purple on each side. That's fantastic. That's what I need. But my golds, my oxygens, that's not working. Oh no. So I can't change the formula. I can't add oxygen here. I can't write plus O2. No, no, I can't even write plus O. Definitely not. I can't add in a little number because it would be really tempting, wouldn't it, to just write a little number two here. Ha <laughs> ha. No. I can't do that. That's not allowed. The only thing I am allowed to do is I can't add the subscript numbers, but I can add the big numbers, the coefficient or the modifier numbers. So I can add a big number. I can add another whole molecule of something. So I want to add one more oxygen to make that balanced, but I've not got oxygen on its own. I've got magnesium oxide. So I need to add another whole magnesium oxide. Okay. So now I've got my initial lot, my one, and I've got a second lot of magnesium oxide here, a second magnesium oxide. But this now means that although I've got enough golds, two here and two there, my purples, my magnesiums are out. I've only got one purple here and two here. Luckily, magnesium is on its own. And so I can just add a purple here without it affecting anything. So now's the time when I write down my coefficients. Now I've done the sum. So I've got one line, two lines, so I can easily count it. OK, I've done them on separate lines so I can count them. So I've got two lots of magnesium, one lot of oxygen. So I don't write the one. Remember, it's chemistry. Don't write that coefficient. Um, and I've got two lots of magnesium oxide, two separate lines. So there we go two lots of magnesium oxide. That equation is balanced. So I can now remove my Lego and it looks like I'm a genius who's been able to do it in my head. 
Some people can do it in their heads, that's absolutely fine. You can just look at that and say, two oxygens, I need two oxygens. Two magnesiums, I need two magnesiums. Bam, sorted. Most people can't, and so it's fine if you can't. Now you can either use a colouring pencil like this one, so you've got lots and lots of colours all in one, and draw the dots, or you can use the Lego studs. I really don't mind. If you're at home, of which you are, and you've got um, building blocks, or you've got um, pencils, or you've got basically anything that you can use to do this, do it. When I'm teaching a whole class, sometimes I use Duplo because that's easier to see. So whatever you want to use to do it, do it like that. You can either do circles, make sure you do them different colours, so your circles would look like that, or you can do the Lego studs like I did. Okay, let's go through another example. Okay, here we go. Methane and oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. That's a really um, common one. Uh, you might be asked to do for this one, you might be asked to do for another hydrocarbon fuel. So um, propane is another really favourite one, that's C3H8. So first of all, let's see what we've got. We've got carbon and we've got four hydrogens. Okay, and I'm doing them all on the same line. If you do it with dots, it's a bit smaller, so it's easier to see. Carbon and four hydrogens. That's not what methane looks like, but that's what it represents. And then I've got oxygen, and I'm keeping with gold for oxygen. Because that way, we're not going to get confused between the um, two different equations. Normally, red's used for oxygen, but at the moment, I've got gold. Then we're going to go on. And what are we going to make? Carbon dioxide. So I had green for carbon earlier. So I'm keeping green for carbon and I'm keeping gold for oxygen. CO2. There we go. Made that. And water. So I have purple for hydrogen. So I need two hydrogens and one oxygen for my water. OK, so we can take a look at that and we can immediately start spotting there's some problems. So I can see on this side, yeah, I've got lots and lots of purples and on this side I haven't. The general rule is to do oxygen last and hydrogen second to last. So my carbons are fine. I don't need to do anything with my carbons. Hydrogens, I need to do something with. And remember, I can't change it. I can't make it H4O. That just doesn't exist. That wouldn't work. So I've got to do a big number. So I'm going to have to add on another whole molecule. OK, I can't add on part molecules. I can't make new things. I need to add on another whole molecule of water. OK, so let's take a look at that. One carbon on each side. Yay! One green on each side. Let's look at my purples, my hydrogens. I've now got four on each side. Fantastic, that's working. And now I look at my oxygens, my golds. Ah, I've got two on the left and four on the right. How can I get more oxygen on my left side? Oh, hang on a second. O2 all by itself. Well, that's nice and easy. I can just add one more O2. So let's get my little gold ones. There you go. One more O2. So let's take a look. One green carbon, one green carbon. Carbon's good. Four purple hydrogens. One, two, three, four purple hydrogens. Excellent. Four gold oxygens. I've got one, two, three, four gold oxygens. Really, really important because it's so easy, especially with oxygen, which spreads itself out between different molecules. Really easy to miss oxygens. So... That looks to me like it's balanced. So now all we need to do is write it down neatly. I'm sorry, this is going a bit out of focus. One of those. One, two of those. Let's write down the big number two. One of those. One, two of those. So I write in a two. Excellent, that's done. I clear away my Lego and I look like a genius. Okay. 
are there any questions about how to do that? Balancing is literally just making the same amount of atoms on each side so that it balances. If you've seen the old fashioned scales, you'll know you have to add mass onto each side to make sure it balances exactly the same. OK, if there are any questions, do let me know. Um, I'm going to do one more example because it's one that involves a little bit of going backwards and forwards. So just give me a second. OK, last one, I promise you, and then you get to have a go at them for yourself. By all means, pause the video now, have a go at it, and then see if you were right. That's absolutely fine. So here we go. Aluminium and chlorine makes aluminium trichloride. So I have one aluminium. I have Cl2, and I make aluminium, one, two, three chlorines, aluminium trichloride. There we go. So immediately I can see my aluminiums are fine, but my chlorines are off. This one's quite hard though, because I can't just double one thing up and it works. So I have to say I've got a two and I've got a three. What number do they have in common? What's their lowest common denominator, to use the mathematical phrases? Well, the best way I can get two and three to meet up nicely is with the number six. So I'm going to need six chlorines on this side. So that's two times three. There we go. So I've got three lots of chlorine. And then I'm going to need two lots of the chlorines on the other side. Ta da! <gasps> But wait, I can't have three chlorines on their own. No, I've got aluminium trichloride. So I've got to put an aluminium on there. So my chlorines are nice and balanced. That's all I wanted. Oh, hang on a minute. By balancing my chlorines, I've messed up my aluminium. Ah! OK, so what we're going to have to do now is make the aluminiums balance happily. Aluminium's all on its own here. So I can just pop one more atom on. Sorted. Let's take a look. Two aluminiums. Two aluminiums. One, two, three, four, five, six chlorines. And one, two, three, four, five, six chlorines. Excellent. So let's write down what we've done. I've got aluminium on two lines. So I put a two. I've got chlorine on three lines. Three. And I've got aluminium trichloride on one, two lines. So I put a number two. Bam. All balanced. Wipe away the Lego. No one needs to know that I used it. OK, as I say, if you draw the dots, it doesn't matter. If you use the Lego, it doesn't matter. Do it however you balance best. OK, good luck with that. Good luck with the questions and I will see you for another video very soon.